up? It's your girl, Brianka J, and I'm coming to you today with a new video. Today, we're going to be talking about the Canterbury Tales. I'm going to give you a little historical connection, and we're going to go over the Knight's Tale and why it is so important and so talked about in literature. But before we get started, I want to ask you for two small favors. Very small. It won't cost you a thing. I swear it. All I want you to do is if you are enjoying my channel and you've been here before, can you go ahead and hit subscribe? You know, it's not it's not that big of a commitment, guys. It's really not. Just just double tap it. If you also, if you like what you see, you like what you hear, you feeling the vibes here, you can hit press thumbs up or you can leave a comment. Any of those three or a combination of will all really help me analytically get my data up in YouTube will show you a little extra love when that's happening. So help me to stick around by doing that. My other favor is November 28th. I'm asking you to join me for my virtual launch of my very first children's book, illustrated and written by yours truly. I will have a launch on Facebook Live at 2 p.m. And I want all of you guys to be there because y'all know how nerve-wracking going live can be. And so I would really, really love to broadcast to an actual audience who is interested so if you can do that that'd be great now without further ado let's talk about the canterbury tales so the canterbury tales it's pretty much one of the first times that we start seeing a tension grow between classes between traditional beliefs and the modern world and so to begin let's go over some of the things that are happening when this work is coming out so Right before the Can Canterbury Tale is released, they have the Battle of Hastings in 1066. William the Conqueror wins the battle up against Normandy, and it becomes a battle of class and aristocracy against feudalism. So we're starting to see issues between classes. People aren't comfortable with their social economic status. We're seeing this play out in our world. Another thing we see is in France during the 1100s, the raising of Mary becomes important to religion and female values begin to become revered. So these are two major changes for Europe in this time. Later on, we're going to see how these issues play out in the Canterbury Tales. Because what's happening is, as a, at a close look at the Canterbury Tales, it reveals that the people often fall short of the traditional values and expected beliefs. So we notice that the religious people in this work aren't so religious and the good people aren't so good, right? The Canterbury Tales is in fact a performance act. How it should be versus how it is, right? They all wear their mask. As each character acts out their understanding of the world via storytelling. So, it's a theoretical and philosophical view of, believed, of the believed chain of being. We're going to notice tensions between traditional belief and the modern world. The first tale is told by the knight. And this is because he's noble. He has a noble status. And because of that, he speaks first. The knight's tale, however, is very old-fashioned and speaks of courtly love steeped in tradition. Never did the course of true love run smooth is one of the major quotes that is said in this tale. Another one says, uh, if the gold were rust, what do we expect of iron? That's pretty true. So, here in the work, we're going to see how the Middle Ages is a hierarchical society that has been challenged by the leading class, each taking claims. But, there's a bit of a difference here because we have money acting as a resource towards social mobility. Money has allowed for progress by using money one can change classes. So now we have issues like sales swords and mercenaries and prostitution coming about as we focus on the Canterbury Tales. In the first 17 lines of the work, it begins with the organic, air, earth, water, and then moves forward ident identifying the great chain of being in hierarchical order. The night goes first. The ideals of the knight are represented by the crown. He is comprised as a knight and has sworn an oath to the king. He is supposed to be the most noble and most sincere of all. Now the knight's tale is, <clears throat> is one that goes about talks about courtly love as I said. So you have two men in a prison. Two men are locked in a prison. 
And as they're locked in this prison, they consistently look out this little bitty window and they see a young maiden, Emily, out their window. And every day, both men pledge their love and allegiance to Emily and they're from their cell. And all they can do is wish to be free to claim her, to love her, to possess her. Because she, because the prison is attached to a garden. So, yeah, they can see her in her garden from their cell. One of the prisoners get, escapes. But his escape doesn't do much. He doesn't go far. He doesn't get far. He doesn't enjoy life. And the reason is, is because he has attached himself and obsessed himself with Emily. Emily here is a representation of freedom. She's a representation of freedom. So what I have here is that one person can escape freedom and can escape prison and does, but his mind is chained to his passion for Emily. His mind is chained to the idea of freedom more than being free. And so he doesn't enjoy freedom. And what we learn here is that stone walls do not make a prison and street bars are not a cage. The world that we live in is part garden and part of prison and we have to allow our minds to choose the reality in which we focus on. And that's just the that's, that's the point of that story. <laughs> um, we see the same scene shown in the Knight's Tale as the one we see in Antigone when Creon refuses to bury the body of a fallen soldier and instead feeds him to the hound. You see that same story played out here. And you also get this ironic philosophical point of view set where you understand that no man can really be caged unless he mentally allows it. Which is kind of what Nelson Mandela said when he was finally free from prison. He says, I never spent a moment in prison because my mind was free. And so this is what this story is about and that is the, what the nice tale is about. I hope this video was helpful. I really do. If you liked it. Go ahead and click the like button if you really loved it and you think I helped you and I can continue helping you with your studies, subscribe. And if you got something to add to this conversation or some pieces you want to enlighten me about because I don't know everything, drop me a comment. Whatever you do is most appreciated and I appreciate you. Thank you for coming. I'll see you very uh, the next time. Bye-bye.